to a special edition of Reality Check. A day after the finance minister presented Budget 2021, the headlines were ecstatic. Many of them claiming that the government has spent and spent big. This is, of course, echoing the government's own claims that they have broken all spending caps in this budget as the government tries to spend its way out of the hole into which the economy had fallen because of the coronavirus. But do the numbers really measure up when one looks at the fine print? What does it exactly mean? We'll get into that in a second, but just listen once again to the finance minister's claim shortly after the budget when she said that we have spent, spent and spent. We have also increased the spending in the forthcoming year. As a result, borrowing increased. Our fiscal deficit, which started at 3.5 during February 2020, has gone to 9.5% of the GDP. So we have spent, we have spent, and we have spent. So the finance minister is saying that our fiscal deficit, which is the gap between how much we earn and how much we spend, has shot up to almost 9% because of the fact that we have spent, spent, spent. But really, have we? And where has the money gone? Now, my colleague Mare Malavi has been crunching the numbers and uh, looking at exactly what has happened. And Mariam, let's start with the basic amount that the extra spending, which the government has said, the increased spending that they're doing on what is called capital expenditure, which is what the government spends on roads and highways and all of that. How much has that actually gone up? Yes, Vasa, so like we just heard the finance minister, she has been claiming that they have spent their way or they're trying to spend their way out of the pandemic and it is in fact true, we have increased our expenditure for the year, we are expected to spend about rupees 4 lakh more, but where are we spending more? Our capital expenditure, which is what we spend on roads, infrastructure, etc., is up by only about rupees 1 lakh crore. The bigger spike of about rupees 3 lakh crore is mm. in what we call the revenue expenditure, which is the government's regular operating expenses, including salaries, etc. So, of, so essentially of the increased 4 lakh crore expenses that we're expecting this year, 3 lakh crore are going to be revenue expenditure and only about 1 lakh crore is going to be under capital expenditure. Right, 1 lakh crore in itself not being a very big amount for a country uh, of the size or economy of the size of India. Also, Madam, the other interesting thing that many people have been pointing out is that even this huge additional amount which is reflecting in our books that we are spending 4 lakh crore more compared to what we had budgeted is largely because of the fact that we've become more transparent in our accounting practices, that we're actually now putting on the record money which earlier we won't, now we are, and that's really what's pushing it up. Yes, yeah, so what the government has now done is that they've reversed the practice of what we would call outsourcing of the food subsidy costs. What the government used to earlier do was ask the Food Corporation of India, the FCI, to borrow or take loans from the National Small Savings Fund to fund these food subsidies. Mm. So this would keep it out of the government's books and hence also he help maintain them better physical health, at least on paper. But now what the finance minister had said, uh, this fin uh, budget is that they will discontinue this practice and that they will start paying directly for the food subsidy and that they've made the necessary changes to the revised estimates for the current year and also the budget estimates for the next year. So now what this has done is that by, bring, by paying up those loans and not taking loans and actually putting it on the government's book, mm. what this has done is we've seen a spike of rupees 3.1 lakh crore in government spending. So this amounts for about 75% of our total increased expenditure just right. by cleaning up our accounting practices. Okay, that's a huge jump. Almost uh, 3 lakh crore, almost 70% of uh, all uh, spending is coming because of this quote-unquote clean up. The other interesting thing has also been that when one parsed the numbers of the huge uh, claim jump in health spending at the time of pandemic, much was made of whether we are going to be actually ramping up health spending from just 1% of GDP to much more. And the finance minister indicating that we have actually done a almost 140% jump in health spending. Again, numbers not quite adding up. Yes, yeah, so what the finance minister has done in the in the budget uh, in her budget speech was that she's almost padded up the numbers to make it seem bigger. She's called it health and well-being, and what she's done is she's added multiple heads to this, including drinking water, sanitation, etc. 
So if we look at just health, which mm. is given under expenditure on major items in the budget document, if we look at just health, the increase in spending is only about 10.5%. In 2021, 20, uh, our ex, uh, budget estimate was about rupees 67,000 crore. That's this current fiscal year. The next fiscal year, 21-22, our budget estimate for health is rupees 75,000 crore. So it's not that much. It's, less, it's a hike of less than 10,000 crore. Okay. And also getting into agriculture, because that's again something much was made of, uh, because uh, in the context of the ongoing farm protests, uh, Finance Minister reeling off a bunch of statistics to show how the government was spending a lot of money on procuring wheat and rice from farmers. But if you look at the actual outlays for agriculture, again, that appears to have come down, not up. Yes, in our agriculture budget has seen a drop. In 2021, our uh, budget estimate for agriculture was rupees 1.54 lakh crore. For the next fiscal year, that's the 21-22, our budget is only rupees 1.48 lakh crore. And in fact, the government's flagship scheme for farmers, which is the PM Kisan uh, hmm. scheme, which was touted uh, very loudly about, uh, by the government, there also the budget has been slashed. It's been slashed by about 13%. Okay, so PM Kisan down as well. Also... Uh, you know, one of the points that is being made is that even if one were to accept the fact that there is more spending, where is the money coming from? And the government had said that a lot of the money will come from disinvestment, privatization. That is something which a lot of people have praised that the government has been bold about disinvestment. Though often in this, what gets lost is what has been the track record of the government so far. Yes, Vasu, the track record doesn't inspire too much confidence because even in the last budget, we had estimated that we would be earning about 2.1 lakh crore from privatization or disinvestment, as the government calls it. Hmm. This was our initial budget estimates. But later, if we look at the current uh, budget that's come out, we've revised our target to about only 32,000 crore. This is very indicative of how slow or bad our attempts at disinvestment and privatization has been in the past. Right. And very quickly, in the end, we also looked at education, uh, because again, those are important areas like agriculture. Education, again, actually showing a drop. Education budget has dropped by about 6%. In fact, this is the lowest education budget that India has seen since 2018-19. In 2018-19, hmm. our budget for education was rupees 85,000 crore. Right. And uh, for the next fiscal year, we have budgeted about rupees 93,000 crore. Okay. And finally... Again, coming back to the idea that this is a budget that is going to boost growth and the assumption is therefore that you will be earning more. You'll be earning more revenues through taxation and other sources. What do the numbers actually say? So uh, the, if you look at the budget, the, even the government doesn't seem to expect that they'll be earning as much as they did in pre or as much as they were expecting to earn in pre-pandemic times even next year. So when our budget for this current fiscal year was first presented last year, we had expected that our revenues would be around 20 lakh crore. For the same budget estimate for revenue for the next fiscal year is only about 18 lakh crore. So our revenue will also take a hit. Okay, down by about 2 lakh crore. Interesting. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Mariam. Okay, uh, joining me uh, on the show tonight, I have with me uh, Ashwini Deshpande, Professor of Economics at Ashoka University, Yamini Iyer, President of the Center for Policy Research, Professor Apurva Javrekar, Assistant Professor of Finance, Indian School of Business. And uh, let me start, though, with uh, Soumya Kanti Ghosh, Group Chief Economic Advisor, SBI. Uh, Soumya Kanti Ghosh, uh, how do you reconcile this? On one hand, as I said, you know, government saying we've done big bank spending, big ticket spending, all the headlines picking that up. But when you pass the numbers, it doesn't quite look like that. Yeah, thank you, Basu. I think uh, uh, I... Uh, I heard what uh, you said about the numbers, but uh, I have the numbers in front of me. I think there are two things to this capital expenditure. Okay. In FI21, if you look into the budget estimates, the capital expenditure was 4.12 lakh crores. Yes. And this amount in the revised estimates has been 4.39 lakh crores. The first yes. thing we need to understand that even in a pandemic, the government has been able to meet the capital expenditure and surplus it, even as all other expenditures have declined, including yes. revenue. And this amount is supposed to go up to 5.54 lakh crores. So which yes. is basically an addition of 1.15 lakh crores over the revised estimates and an addition of 1.32 lakh crores over the budget estimates of FI21. Yes, yes. Now, I'm, I'm now saying... If you look into the, 
I'm yeah. saying, so now, Gandhi Ghosh, we are saying that yes, capex has gone up by one lakh crore, which is one point three two lakh crore. One point three over the budget estimate. Yes, but is that enough? One one and a half lakh crore enough to stimulate the economy of size of India? That's that's the question one was asking. Yes, let me now let me now come to that. So this basically this is so uh, this is five point five four lakh crores. Now we are not taking additional two lakh crores, which is on capital expenditure, which is for the autonomous bodies. So if we take that into account, so we have to take the holistic picture of two lakh crores and this one point one five lakh crores, which you have taken into consideration. Now if you ask me, this three point five four lakh crores. Mm. Even if I assuming and uh, I mean uh, in economic parlance and incremental capital output ratio of say 4.5, that actually will could have an impact of GDP on 0.79 percent. But let me tell you an important fact over here. Yes, if you and, and let's try and keep it a bit simple. Let's not get too technical. Yes. Yes. No, I'll not get technical. I'll just give you a small figure over here. Since you ask me whether this capital expenditure is sufficient or not, if you look into the history of the last 20 years. Yes. The average increase in capital expenditure or decline has been twenty-five thousand crore over a period of twenty years. Okay, okay. And this year, this amount is one point three two lakh crore. So even if I assuming that this number is not adequate, I think this, this is still seven times higher than the average over the okay, last eighty okay. years. Okay. All right. But at the same time, uh, Yamini Iyer, and this is something now, as I said, many people are talking about that one of the reasons also why the spending figure has ballooned. Is because the government, for a change, was actually trying to be transparent and put on the books expenses which were off the books, like the food subsidy, has been put on the books, and that's ballooned it by almost three lakh crores. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, to begin with, it's really important to credit the government uh, for making good use of the crisis that COVID presented it with uh, to come clean about its books of accounts. One of the reasons why uh, the government of India chose not to adopt a particularly expansionary fiscal stance uh, in the early days of the lockdown, in particular relying yeah. instead on monetary policy levers, was because it was worried about spooking the markets. The only thing that won't spook the markets is credibility of numbers. So we've headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But it certainly does tell us that in fact uh, even the projected ex fiscal expansion uh, necessary in times of the COVID crisis actually wasn't as significant because as you rightly say 3.1 lakh crores of debt has come back onto the books of accounts specifically for, from the FCI for food subsidy. Uh, so in fact, uh, if you look, as I mentioned in your program yesterday as well, if you look at the overall expansion of that 4.5 lakh crores of expenditure uh, hmm. uh, for, for this fiscal, uh, a significant nearly 80% of that expansion comes from increased spending in food subsidy and hmm. fertilizer hmm. subsidy. So it also tells you that overall that expanded uh, uh, pie of money from government that was necessary, particularly when the when the economy just froze, was actually not a vast spend. Right. It also tells you that there was space for the government to spend a lot more against the backdrop of the crisis. Right. And one of the reasons why the fiscal deficit is so high is because last year's disinvestment targets were not met. Right. Now, for a long while, the government of India has relied on the e expectation that disinvestment uh, um, of, uh, receipts mm. will fund its committed expenditures. Mm. In good times, this is bad fiscal math. In a pandemic, it is disastrous. Right. Because is this disinvestment to, uh, I think it was tw uh, uh, 2.1, uh, 1, 2 lakh crores expected receipts from disinvestment yes. in actually up being 0.32 lakh crores. That's so right. I mean, look at the fall, right? So when your tax collections are low, your committed expenditures are high. You've done lots of uh, uh, arith uh, wise yes. arithmetic to avoid the issue, and this is not just this government. It's a long hang from 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 a while. So that's a challenge, uh, right? Yeah, and and that's got us into a place where when we need okay, to spend, when we'll, we okay, let's see if this time around uh, they're able to come closer to the targets. But Ashwini Deshpande, uh, that's the question that if the fiscal, if the spending is not really in, in you know, sync with the hype, then all this business that this will stimulate the economy and particularly create jobs, which is something you look at closely, how is that going to happen? Absolutely right. And I think Yamini has uh, nailed it. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat the points that she's made. But the biggest, one of the biggest challenges, uh, even pre-pandemic, 
and certainly got exacerbated during the pandemic is the challenge of unemployment. And now, of course, this infrastructure project is being touted as a solution to the unemployment problem, saying you will build roads, construction is labor intensive, it's going to increase employment. But the question is, first of all, by how much, you know, are there estimates of the impact of this infrastructure spending mm. on, uh, on employment? Secondly, women are dropping out of the labor force in huge numbers, right? And so what is the, uh, what is the vision of this government about a, boosting overall employment, and B, uh, uh, bridging the gender gap uh, in employment, right? And it needs a lot of enabling uh, conditions right. for women to uh, to be able to work, you know? So I don't think there was a vision that we saw at all in this budget right. on that. And uh, Professor Javadekar, one of the things that I was somewhat disappointed about was the health number, because it was exciting to hear that there was going to be a big increase in health spending, as many had hoped. But then again, to club other heads to pad it up, like drinking water, sanitation, and all of that. Um, so the actual health part of it is uh, not really seeing that much of a jump. Uh, I mean, you're right that the total number that they have given is clubbing many of the other heads as well uh, for the uh, health budget. But let's let's be a little bit pragmatic. We are already sitting on you know a government debt of close to 75 percent. That must have gone up uh, now to around 80 percent already. So mm -hmm. there was a limited room, at least in my opinion, to borrow. So at least once they decided to borrow uh, to some extent, they have put the money, as we said, either in the capital expenditures or uh, or uh, maybe to you know bring this FCI on its book or. Um, mm. get the food subsidy on the book. So, so there was, I think, limited scope to increase the welfare welfare expenditure as right. was seen in last couple of budgets. The, the boost to welfare expenditure was quite a bit. So, uh, so there was, uh, I mean, just the math doesn't add up. If you are going to spend on capital expenditure, they have limited room to uh, do so much on the health care. And of course, it is true that we are underspenders when it comes to uh, health and even education. Sure. Uh, but we cannot do uh, a increase, I think in my opinion, we cannot just increase the expenditures in one go. So I think uh, I think we are moving in the right direction. One can debate the quantum. Okay. Uh, the quantum is the question. But Swamya Kanti Ghosh, is that a matter of concern? While certainly uh, there can be a strong case to, to pump in money for infrastructure, embark on a massive construction building plan, that you are beginning to see either a shrinkage or not a significant increase in crucial areas like health, like education where there's been a cut and even a small cut when it comes to the budget for agriculture. Yeah, Vasu, just give me, if you give me 30 seconds, I'll just have a small uh, counter to what the other panelists says. I think the issue over here is that whether you are bringing it out from the FCI into the mainstream budget, but the issue is that the government has spent 3.1 lakh crores additional on food subsidy in the current fiscal out of an estimated 4.1. And 70,000 crore additional has been spent on the Nariga. So that we can't take away the fact that even if it has been bought over there, the mm. amount has been spent by the government. Hold on, just one thing now, though. No, no, one, hold on a second. I'm not sure if that entire additional amount that was paid uh, or that has been brought from the FCI areas is all fresh. Some of it, I think, is also past areas. Exactly. With exactly. the FCI, no, which is also being settled. Yeah. No, it's... It's it not that the entire amount of 3 lakh, I think the budget, we can actually describe that because of paucity of time, out of the 10 lakh crore increase in fiscal, 10 lakh crore increase in fiscal deficit, 6 lakh crores is because of the revenue shortage and 4 lakh crores because of the expenditure increase, of which 3 lakh crores is because of the F increase in the uh, yes. I mean, FCI procurement. Yes. Now, now, my point over here is that I, I have looked into the education component. Yes, there has been a marginal adjustment in the education component. Hmm. But you also need to admit that the, and there, there is a slight decline in the education head. But you also need to admit that this year actually was an abnormal year. So this is actually an outlier year. So if you have no, to no. make a proper comparison yeah. of, the, of the numbers, you have to make it with the earlier years. So, which will give you a fair bit of no, no, Swamya, uh, Swamya Kanti Ghosh. Uh, I am. Uh, by the way, this is not. Uh, this is not a personal thing. Like I'm saying that the government is is doing A or B. I'm only matching this against the hype. I mean, if the government yeah, I, was not going to say we have spent, spent, spent in a manner that made it seem much more than the actual component of spending or the areas in which you spent, then this would not be an issue. But 
It's just that mm. the image in perception given was somewhat different. No, I'll give you the numbers in front of me. The education, the expenditure on education is 93,224 crore in FI22 revised budgetary estimates. It was 85,089 crores in revised estimates, which mm. of course is a decline from the budgetary estimates in FI21. So right. if you actually compare the FI21 budgetary estimates and FI22 budgetary estimates, there is a decline. So I'm not denying that. Right. But my simple point is that there is an increase from the revised estimates of FI21. But for by pure comparison, one should look into the revised okay. over the budget. Okay. Okay. Yamini, we're very short of time. Overall, though, that uh, do you think that then what is it? Is it that is is it crucial that this time we come closer to our privatization targets because that is really going to power the extra spending or or what how is that going to work well uh, absolutely to look at uh, what uh, is being projected in terms of tax revenue collections for next year rightly they are modest uh, given uh, that even uh, the, the government is admitting it's going to take at least two years before we get mm. back to pre-pandemic levels of mm. growth and the IMF says it's going to take longer uh, and there's a very very ambitious disinvestments uh, targets that uh, as always are meant to fuel expenditure so right. government has right. to double down uh, it hasn't done it so far maybe the crisis will do a lot more than uh, than we then expect what it allows. I to say okay. that uh, very quickly on the FCI the 3.1 lakh crore matches the debt that the FCI has with the National Social Security Fund, some portion of that is additional for this year, but a bulk of that is also dues uh, from the past. So uh, right. it, it is right. important. To, so it's not, take, I mean, no doubt more was spent, of but course. The, you know, it is important to recognize that uh, there were also past dues right. that were uh, Literally, uh, very, very short on time, Ashwini Deshpande, what, what do you think would have been a more prudent way of, of focusing the money, you think, particularly with jobs in mind? No, so one is, uh, you, you know, the point is that jobs can be created. One is, of course, construction, NREGA, but also if there was livelihoods, direct cash transfers, then it puts purchasing power in the hands of the people, and that stimulates demand. So the, you have to look at the whole issue in a slightly more holistic manner right. uh, 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 than what the government is doing. Okay, that, yes, that's in, important. If you stimulate demand, then that kind of manufacturers will invest more, hire more, and then you get into a virtuous cycle rather virtuous than, the, cycle, yeah. than the other way around. Well, Vasit, very quickly, one but, last thought. The oh my God, yes, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the poor are generally an afterthought, and I think the budget is, a, is yet again a reminder of it. That's all. Okay, all right. Well, let's see how it uh, all plays out. But uh, thank you all so much uh, for joining me on Reality Check. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.